ever get that feeling learning new English words? Um, like you're writing on sand, you think you've got it, and then poof, it's gone. Yeah, I know that feeling. Happens to me all the time. But guess what? We're going to dive into some seriously cool techniques to make those words stick around. Like for good. Oh, nice. Yeah. We've got a fantastic source today. Okay. A podcast called Learn English Through Story. Interesting. They really make vocabulary sound fun. And trust me, these tips are going to change the way you learn. I'm all ears. Okay. <laughs> People often approach language learning like yeah. they're trying to cram for a test. Yeah. It's all about memorizing lists. Right. But that's not really how our brains work best. This podcast is all about working with your brain. Right. Not against it. Yeah. So their first technique is something called the power of repetition. I like it. But it's way more clever than just repeating a word like a hundred times. That's not just rote memorization. No, not at all. Okay. Think of it like training for a marathon. You wouldn't try to run 26 miles on day one. Right. Cool flat off. You start with shorter distances. Right. And you gradually increase over time. Makes sense. So that's the idea behind spaced repetition. Okay. You revisit the word at increasing intervals. But like how long are we talking? Maybe like 10 minutes later, mm. then a few hours in the next day. Okay. It's like giving your brain a little workout with the word, letting those neural pathways, the connections in your brain, get stronger with each repetition. Each time you try to recall the word, you're also strengthening the memory. Yeah. It's this cycle of learning and reinforcement. I like it. That mirrors how our brains are wired to form long-term memories. It's so cool how that works. That is. Okay, so now on to technique number two. Okay. And this one is all about action. Use it or lose it. Well, I like that. They give this example with the word serene. Okay. So let's say you want to remember it. Okay. You could try using it in a sentence like, that mountain view is so serene. That's a great example of active recall. Right. By using the word in a sentence, yeah. you're actively retrieving it from memory, uh -huh. which strengthens those neural pathways associated with the word. I'm trying to think of a serene image. And if you can make that sentence relevant to your own life, even better. You know what? I was just thinking about how I need to find a more serene spot in my own life. Like what? Maybe a quiet park or something. Oh, yeah. See, I'm already using it. And that's the point. You're not just passively absorbing the word. You're making it an active part of your vocabulary. So don't be shy. Throw those new words into conversations. Write them down. Use them in your inner monologue, whatever works. Absolutely. The more you use them, the more they become a part of your active vocabulary. Okay. And that leads perfectly into technique number three. Okay, what's that? Which is all about making words meaningful to you. Oh, nice. Make it personal. I like this one. This one really resonates with me. It's about finding a way to connect a new word with a memory, an experience, or even an emotion. Oh, wow. Like, I remember learning the word ephemeral. Okay. And it just wouldn't stick. Really? And then I thought about how fireflies only come out for a short time each year, and suddenly the word click. Because you're not just memorizing a definition. You're attaching it to a sensory experience. Yeah. The image of fireflies, maybe even the feeling of warm summer nights. Yes. And that personal connection makes it more likely to stick. It's like the word has more weight to it now because it's tied to something that matters to me. When you involve emotions, you engage the amygdala, uh -huh. which is the part of your brain that processes emotions. Oh, okay. And guess what? What? The amygdala is a close neighbor to the hippocampus. Okay which is responsible for memory formation. Interesting. So when you create that emotional connection, you're essentially boosting the memory-making process. I like it. Okay, technique number four yeah. is context is everything. And it's like how you wouldn't just hand someone a random puzzle piece. Yeah. You need to see the whole picture. Yeah. Words are the same way. Yeah. They make so much more sense when you understand the context. They do. The podcast uses the word astonished as an example. Okay. Instead of just memorizing the word, they suggest learning it in a phrase like, I was astonished by the beautiful sunset. I love that example. Right. If you just memorize the word astonished, yeah. you might not fully grasp its nuance. Yeah. But when you hear it in a sentence like that, you instantly understand its meaning and how to use it. That just makes sense. This is particularly important for words that have multiple meanings. Yeah. Or words that can be used in different ways, depending on the situation. Exactly. So don't just memorize words in isolation. Yeah. Learn them in phrases, sentences, or even short stories. And it's not just about understanding the meaning. It's also about remembering it. Okay. When you learn a word in context, yeah. you're creating a richer, more vivid memory 
which makes it much more likely to stick. Okay, now this next technique is where things get really fun. All fun. Visualization and mnemonics. Nice. Get ready to unleash your creativity. Right. This technique really speaks to the power of associating words with images. Oh, okay. For example, if you're trying to remember the word elated, okay. you could imagine someone jumping for joy because they're so happy. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> oh, I do this all the time. We do. In fact, just the other day, I was trying to remember the word serendipitous. Okay. And I pictured this incredible, unexpected rainbow appearing after a rainstorm. That's a perfect example. It is. You're engaging both sides of your brain. Oh. The right side which is more creative and visual. Right. And the left side, which is more analytical and language focused. Wow. When you combine those two, you get some serious memory power. It's like building a bridge between the abstract concept of the word and a concrete image you can easily recall. Exactly. Okay. And then there are mnemonics, yeah. which are these little memory tricks yeah. that can make a word much easier to remember. Like what? The podcast gives the example of gregarious. Okay. Which means sociable. Right. They suggest picturing someone named Greg who's super talkative and loves to be around people. I love that. Does that make sense? And the sillier the mnemonic, the better, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh -huh. Our brains tend to remember things that are unusual or funny. So if you're struggling to remember a word, try coming up with a crazy mnemonic. That will make you laugh. Yeah. It's guaranteed to stick. Okay. We've covered five amazing techniques so far. Five already. But the podcast has a bonus tip for us. Okay, hit me. Flashcards. Oh, flashcards. But with a modern twist. Oh, interesting. Okay. They suggest ditching the old school paper flashcards. Yeah. And using apps like Anki or Quizlet. Oh, yeah. I've heard of those. And the reason they're so effective is because they incorporate that spaced repetition we talked about earlier. Yeah. Plus, they're super convenient. Yeah. You can practice anywhere, anytime. That's right. No more bulky stacks of flashcards to lug around. You can have your entire vocabulary list right there on your phone. And here's the most important thing to remember. Consistency is key. Yeah. Whether you use flashcards, mnemonics, or any of the other techniques. Yeah. The key is to practice regularly. So find what works best for you and make it a habit. Even just 10, 15 minutes a day can make a huge difference. You got it. Okay, I'm ready for more. All right, let's keep going. These apps take the idea of spaced repetition even further. They use algorithms that track your progress and adjust the intervals based on how well you're remembering each word. So it's like having a personalized flashcard deck that's constantly evolving to match your learning needs? Exactly. And they often incorporate other features like images, audio pronunciations, and even example sentences, which can really enhance the learning experience. Plus, you can create your own decks or use pre-made ones so it's super customizable. Okay, so we've covered some awesome techniques for making those words stick. But the podcast also made a point that really resonated with me. It's okay to have fun with it. I think we often forget that learning a language can be enjoyable. Like I used to dread vocabulary drills, but these techniques make it feel more like a game, especially with the mnemonics and visualizations. It's almost like tapping into that childlike sense of wonder and playfulness. Because when we're having fun, we're more engaged, and that makes the learning process so much more effective. But let's be real. There will be times when it feels challenging. Oh, absolutely. There will be days when you feel stuck or frustrated, like you're not making any progress. That's totally normal. Learning a language is a journey, and like any journey, it has its ups and downs. The key is to not give up on those tough days. Remember that even small steps taken consistently can lead to big results. So even if you only have five minutes, review a few flashcard or listen to a short podcast. And don't be afraid to experiment with different techniques until you find what works best for you. Everyone learns differently. Some people thrive with flashcards, while others prefer visualizations. So if one method isn't clicking, don't be afraid to try something else. And remember, there are so many resources available to support you along the way. Podcasts, apps, online courses, language exchange partners, the list goes on. We live in a time where anyone with an internet connection can learn a new language. Pretty incredible when you think about it. So let's make the most of it. But beyond the techniques and resources, I think the podcast touched on something really important. The why behind our language learning journey. Having a clear purpose in mind can make all the difference. Whether it's to travel the world, connect with family members, or simply expand your horizons, knowing your why can be incredibly motivating, especially on those challenging days. It helps you stay focused on the bigger picture and remember why you embarked on this journey in the first place. 
And it's amazing how learning a language can open up so many doors and opportunities. It can connect you to new cultures, new people, and new ways of thinking. It can even change the way you see the world. It's like gaining a new perspective, a new lens through which to view everything. And speaking of perspectives, let's dive back into some specific strategies for implementing those word learning techniques, starting with repetition. Repetition is the foundation of learning. But it's not just about mindlessly repeating words over and over. It's about using spaced repetition effectively. And we talked about those amazing flashcard apps like Anki and Quizlet, which do a fantastic job of automating the spaced repetition process. But even if you're not using an app, you can still incorporate spaced repetition into your learning. Like how? You could try writing down the words you want to learn on pieces of paper and then strategically placing them around your house or workspace. You'll encounter those words throughout your day, which serves as a natural form of spaced repetition. Oh, I like that. It's like building mini reminders into your environment. Or you could use a notebook to create your own vocabulary lists and then revisit those lists at specific intervals. You could even try recording yourself saying the words and then listening to the recordings at different times during the day. The key is to find a method that works for you and then be consistent with it. Even just a few minutes of space repetition each day can make a big difference in your long-term retention. Now, how about we talk about making those words come alive by putting them into practice? Okay, let's unpack use it or lose it. This one is all about taking those new words out for a spin in real life situations. Because as we all know, knowing a word and actually using it are two different things. It's like having all the ingredients for a delicious cake, but never actually baking it. So how can we make sure we're using those new words we're learning? One of the best ways is to try to incorporate them into your everyday conversations, even if it feels a little awkward at first. I think a lot of people hesitate to use new words because they're afraid of making mistakes. I understand that fear. But it's important to remember that mistakes are an essential part of the learning process. They help us identify areas where we need to improve, and they push us outside of our comfort zones. So embrace those mistakes and use them as opportunities for growth. And if you're unsure about how to use a word correctly, don't hesitate to ask for help. There are tons of resources available, dictionaries, online forums, language exchange partners that can offer guidance and support. So don't let fear hold you back from using those new words. The more you use them, the more confident you'll become. And the more likely you are to remember them in the long run. Now let's talk about make it personal, which is one of my favorites because it really taps into the power of our own experiences. This technique is all about connecting those new words to our lives, our memories, and even our emotions. Because when we can relate to a word on a personal level, it becomes much more memorable. It's like creating a little mental hook for that word to hang on to. So yeah. how can we make those personal connections? Well, one way is to think about times when we've experienced the meaning of that word. For example, if you're learning the word resilient, Think about a time when you bounce back from a challenge. Or if you're learning the word grateful, think about something you're thankful for. By making these connections, you're not just memorizing a definition. You're creating a vivid memory that's linked to that word. And the more vivid the memory, the more likely you are to remember it. So get creative and try to come up with personal stories or experiences that relate to the words you're learning. You can even write those stories down or share them with a language partner. That's a great idea. Mm. Because the more you engage with those words, the more likely they are to stick. And what about adding some visual flair to those personal connections? You're talking about visualization, right? It's an incredibly powerful technique because it helps us create a mental image associated with a word, giving our brains that extra boost. It's like creating a little movie in your mind that helps you remember the word. So if you're learning the word elated, <laughs> you can imagine someone jumping for joy. Or if you're learning the word serene, you could picture a calm lake surrounded by trees. And the more vivid and detailed the image, the better. So let your imagination run wild and have fun with it. And you know what can make visualization even more effective? Adding emotions to the mix. Emotions are incredibly powerful memory triggers. So if you're visualizing a word like excited, try to feel that excitement in your body. Or if you're visualizing a word like sad, Allow yourself to feel a sense of sadness. By adding emotions to your visualizations, you're creating an even stronger connection to those words. And the stronger the connection, the more likely you are to remember them. So let's not underestimate the power of emotions in language learning. Embrace those feelings and let them guide your learning journey. All right, let's shift gears and talk about context, which is all about understanding how words are used in different situations. Because a single word can have multiple meanings. 
Right. And those meanings can change depending on the context. So it's not enough to just memorize a definition. We need to understand how that word is used in real life situations. And the best way to do that is to expose ourselves to as much authentic language as possible. So read books, watch movies, listen to music, and have conversations with native speakers. All of those activities will help you develop a deeper understanding of how words are used in different contexts. And the more you understand the context, the less likely you are to make mistakes. Because you'll have a better grasp of the nuances of the language. And you'll be able to use those words more confidently and accurately. So let's make a conscious effort to immerse ourselves in the language we're learning and pay attention to the context in which those words are being used. Because by doing so, we'll be building a strong foundation for fluency. Okay, so we've covered repetition using those words, making them personal, visualization, and context. We've covered a lot of great techniques, but we're not quite done yet. That's right. We still have one more technique to discuss mnemonics. Mnemonics? Those clever little memory tricks that can make a world of difference. Because let's be honest, sometimes we need a little extra help remembering those tricky words. And that's where mnemonics come in. So how do they work? Well, mnemonics are basically memory aids that help us link new information to something we already know. It's like creating a mental bridge between the unfamiliar and the familiar. And there are many different types of mnemonics. Like what? Well, one common type is the acronym. Where you take the first letter of each word in a phrase and create a new word. For example, to remember the order of the planets in our solar system. You could use the acronym, My Very Educated Mother Just Served Us Noodles. Which stands for Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. That's right. And it's much easier to remember that acronym than to try to memorize the planets in order. Another type of mnemonic is the rhyme. Where you create a rhyme or a jingle to help you remember something. For example, to remember the spelling of principle, you could use the rhyme, the principle is your pal. That's a good one. And the sillier the rhyme, the better. Because our brains tend to remember things that are unusual or funny. So don't be afraid to get creative and come up with your own rhymes or jingles. And if you're not feeling particularly creative, there are plenty of resources online that offer pre-made mnemonics for all sorts of things. So if you're struggling to remember a word or concept, try using a mnemonic. It might just be the key to unlocking that memory. And you know what else can help with memory? Getting enough sleep. Sleep is crucial for memory consolidation. So if you're serious about learning a new language, Make sure you're getting enough rest. Because when you're well rested, your brain is much better equipped to learn and retain new information. And speaking of retaining information, let's talk about the importance of review. Because it's not enough to just learn something once. We need to review it regularly to make sure it sticks. And the more we review, the stronger those memories become. Exactly. So make sure you're building review into your language learning routine. Whether it's through spaced repetition flashcards or simply revisiting old material. Regular review is essential for long-term retention. All right, so we've tackled repetition. We've explored how to use those new words. We've added a personal touch, a splash of visualization, and a dash of context. We even got a little silly with mnemonics. Yeah. But as we wrap up this deep dive into word learning, there's one more element I want to bring up. The emotional side of this whole process. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, language learning isn't just about memorization and techniques. It's also an emotional journey. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, think about it. When you're struggling to remember a word, mm -hmm. it can be frustrating, right? But when you finally nail it, yes. there's this sense of accomplishment, almost like a little victory. Yeah, you climbed a mountain. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it's important to acknowledge and embrace those emotions because they're all part of the process. Ooh, I agree. We get so focused on like getting to fluency yeah. that we sometimes forget to just enjoy the ride. Right. And the truth is there will be moments of doubt, moments of excitement, moments where you feel like giving up and moments where you feel like you can conquer the world. You got to ride those waves. Yes. You do. Yeah. And those emotions can actually be like valuable tools. Oh, really? Yeah. For example, if you're feeling frustrated, it might be a sign that you need to like take a break or try a different approach. Oh, that's a good point. Or like if you're feeling excited and motivated, yeah, that's the perfect time to push yourself a little further, maybe tackle a more challenging text or have a conversation with a native speaker. Oh, I see. So pay attention to those emotional cues. Okay. They can provide valuable insights into your learning process. That makes sense. <laughs> You know, as we wrap up this whole conversation about memorizing words, yeah, it's really about so much more than just vocabulary. I was just thinking the same thing. It's about expanding our horizons. Yeah. 
connecting with new cultures yeah and ultimately enriching our lives it's about opening ourselves up to new ways of thinking and experiencing the world and it all starts with those individual words yep. those building blocks of communication and understanding right each word is like a little doorway to yeah. a new world of possibilities i love that analogy with every new word we learn we unlock a new perspective yeah a new way of seeing things and those perspectives add up, yeah. changing how we think and how we interact with the world around us. Well, this deep dive has given me a whole new appreciation for the power of words. Me too. And the amazing things our brains can do. It's been a fascinating exploration. It has. And I hope our listeners feel inspired to embark on their own word learning adventures. I think they will. And remember, you don't have to be a language learning expert to make progress. No, no, not at all. Just take it one word at a time, experiment with different techniques, and most importantly, have fun with it. Couldn't have said it better myself. So there you have it. Your toolkit for conquering new words and making them a part of your language journey. That's awesome. Keep exploring. Keep learning. And keep those words flowing. Until next time, happy word learning.